Hi everyone, welcome back to Bell's Books. I'm Carly and today I am bringing you my Victober TBR because it's the first day of October, which is the most wonderful time of the year. Yay! Victober is awesome. October is awesome because uh, it's Halloween at the end of the month and I love Halloween. Um, and I love this time of year for spooky gothic reads. So I have a stack of books to talk to you about which are for Victober and then some contemporary uh, spooky reads. So let's get started. The first one I am definitely going to read is Charlie. Charlie? <laughs> no, that's not right. <laughs> it's Shirley by Charlotte Bronte. Um, this is the group read along for Victober. So we are reading a chapter a day which is manageable because it's quite, you know, chunky. Um, let's check the print on this. The print is quite small in here. Um, so it's a big book, but reading that over the whole month will be good. I haven't read this before. I am a big fan of the Brontes. Um, I have read Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights, and both of those books are um, two of my favourite books of all time. Actually, and last year I read um, The Tenant of Wildfowl Hall by um, Anne Bronte and I really enjoyed that as well. So I probably put that in to my uh, top favourite books as well. I just love the Brontes. My, I have family from, from that area, from Haworth. And so when I go back up to Haworth, it feels like I'm going home. And I just love going to the, um, the parsonage where the Bronte sisters lived and it's just... I just love it. So I'm really excited about getting to this. I know nothing about it. Um, I have read the blurb, um, but I'm not, it's set, it's a historical novel. So it says it was her only historical novel set in the Napoleonic Wars um, in Yorkshire. And that's all I know. That's all I want to know. I'm just happy to go in blind on this one. So that is the first one that I'm definitely going to read because I mean, I've got a big stack of books here. I'm not going to read all of these. These are just ones that I would like to get to at some point, but I definitely I'm not going to get to them all this month. The second one is a little one. I like little reads. Um, can you see that? This cover is very shiny. Yes, uh, it is Lois the Witch uh, by Elizabeth Gaskell. Um, now, this is a, either a short story or a, a novella. I know that there are other copies of this book where it's in it's set in like um, a collection of short stories. So this is about a girl who goes to America and gets caught up in the Salem witch trials. I'm all I'm all over that. So I'm very excited about this one. I've not read any Elizabeth Gaskell either. So um, that'll be good to read some of her work. I really want to get to Wives and Daughters as well. I've got North and South, but I haven't read it. Um, so I thought if I start off with Lois the Witch, because it's witchy, it's perfect for this time of year and it fits with Victober, so perfect, yay. So definitely that one, because I know I can read that in the month. All right, this one I bought especially because I was feeling down, so I bought books, as you do, and I bought a beautiful copy of Dracula. <laughs> look at it, look, oh, look at it, it's so shiny. Um. I have never read Dracula and I want to. It's the perfect time of year for it. It's big, but this is like a nice size print actually. Um, and it has some like really cute, oh, look at the end papers, it's all the bats. So, I mean, I'm gonna start this. I don't know if I'll finish it in the month because I'm quite a slow reader and if I'm reading the other things as well, probably not, but perfect for this time of year. So yay for Dracula. I just love that book. Oh, do you like my Victoria setup, by the way? I meant to say, look, got my raven. My... <laughs> Come here, raven. With his goggle eyes. Um, my raven companion. And I might, uh, I've put some actual Victorian books up there to look a bit vintage-y. Um, I'm just gonna, I, I, I was, I really wanted to wear something Victorian, but I don't have anything Victorian, so I've just got my Hogwarts jumper on. Hopefully, by the next video, I will have something Victorian. Okay, um, the next one 
I got this for my birthday because um, Katie over at Books and Things recommended this and she was raving about it so I picked it up because I really want, I, I put it on my birthday list because I really wanted to read this. Um, it's Hester by Margaret Oliphant um, and from what I remember about what Katie said about it is that she she loved it because um, the one of the main characters Hester um, was a bit of a like a proto-feminist uh, character so from from the blurb uh, th this book centers on three characters three main characters Catherine Vernon who's who sounds like what Miss Havisham could have been if she'd got over it so she was like jilted in her youth and then uh, she rose to uh, gain some power as the head of a family bank <laughs> so I just thought oh it sounds like like you know if Miss Havisham had just got out of her wedding dress could she could have done that um and two other characters Hester and Edward and it just sounds like their interactions um in this family and I don't know much else about it but I know that Katie absolutely adored it so it sounded like my kind of jam so that is one uh possibility the other oh another Elizabeth Gaskell is uh Mary Barton these covers are so shiny in my green light. Um, this was one I picked up from Charity Shop. Again, because I thought I should read some Elizabeth Gaskell and I don't have any. Um, so this is uh, a novel about Mary who is trying to decide between two men. Uh, Henry Carson, the son of a rich industrialist and her working class lover, Jem Wilson. Great name. Um, so I guess it's just about that uh, love triangle thing there and I with all of these um novels I think by Elizabeth Gaskell it's about the working class uh and the upper class divide industrialization and just you know about the what was going on at the time so yeah would like to get to that probably won't uh get to that this month but at some point now I had to, I had to uh show this book because it's hilarious I haven't read Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robbie Lewis, Robert Louis Stevenson, but I do want to. And the copy I have is bizarre. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look at that cover. Like, <laughs> I showed this to Dan just now and he said it looked like a hungover Martin Clunes, <laughs> which is a pretty accurate description. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> I mean, I would read this book, but I just really don't like this cover. So I think I'm gonna like give this away and get a better one because I can't. Now, now he said that as well. I can't pick this up without thinking of a hungover Martin Clune. So no. <laughs> um, another one that I want to read. I know I'm not gonna get to is Middle March. Again, I don't like this copy because. I mean, I've only just got this, but the print is tiny. I mean, I have to like have a, a magnifying glass to read this. It's and it's a large book, you know. Middle March. This is a big old book, um, but it's one of those classics. I think I I should read. I want to read, but the size is just putting me off. And that size, this is like eight hundred pages with tiny, tiny print. So. No, I'm not going to be reading that. But at some point, if I get a, a new copy with larger print, then I will do. Um, this is a book I'm not going to read, but um, I wanted to show you because it also it's super fun. Um, just for context, the reason I bought this book, I found this in a, a secondhand bookstore in Hay on Wye, uh, one of my favourite places of all time. It's um, a book town in on the border of Wales and England. And uh, they have some amazing bookshops uh, in Hay and Wye. It's just beautiful. If you haven't been there, go there. If you love books, you will love it. Um, and I picked this up because I had a cat called Marmaduke. And he was my the love of my life, my cat Marmaduke. Um, and this book is called The Maxims of Marmaduke. Um, it does fit for Victober because it was published. When was it published? 1909? Does that fit in? Oh, I don't know if it does. It might be just outside. Um, but basically, this book is is bonkers. It's just this dude, Charles Edward Jerningham, who 
in brackets it says Marmaduke. It's just like his random thoughts, just a load of random thoughts, and they're all bullshit, but it's hilarious. Well, I'll read you some. Genius is a combination of aspiration and inspiration. Too many interests spoil the brain. We insist that money is the root of all evil and behave as if we were the source of all good. It's like, it's basically just like mansplaining everything. He just, this guy obviously thinks he knows all the things. Right, Forty put it in a book. It's just it's batshit crazy. Um, so I just thought I'd show that to you because it's just, it's hilarious. And I love it. I love this little book. Okay. Now, moving on to uh, three contemporary reads uh, for this month. If I have time, I will get to The Deathless Girls uh, by Kieran Mill by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. Um, this is a like a it's a YA, it's a young adult, and it is like um, an origin story of Dracula's brides, which just sounds amazing. Um, so it says on the back, it's about two twin sisters um Lil and Kizzy and they are enslaved and it's about them kind of get away getting away from being slaves and then somehow ending up as Dracula's brides um so I would love to read Dracula and then read this straight afterwards I just think that would be a great thing to do for October um I have now I've got all of Laura Purcell's novels I haven't read them because oh, it's one of those things where I know that I'm probably going to love them because I love gothic novels I love creepy books and all of her books seem to be like right up my street um this one makes big claims on the cover there is a claim by Natasha Pulley who says so many books are hyped up as being the next Jamaica Inn or the next Rebecca but Bone China really is Rebecca and Jamaica Inn are two of my favourite books ever. Um, and it's set in Cornwall. And I just, I love this cover. Uh, so this seems like a dual timeline um, novel as well. So it is about a doctor who is trying out these weird medical treatments uh, for, what is it, for uh, consumption. Uh, so his i think his wife has it and so he's trying these medical trials at this pl weird this place in cornwall so he takes his family there to try out these uh, weird medical tests on prisoners suffering from consumption um and then 40 years later uh, hester arrives at the same house to take up as a, a position um as a nurse and then she discovers the original girl from that family um who is now kind of nearly mute so i think she's discovering her story so i think it's like one of those uh, dual timelines which i always love as well so i really want to get to this soon um again it's not a small book it's like 400 pages but i would love to read some laura purcell this time of year uh also thinking about the silent companions um well of course it, i don't know tell me tell me what do you think have you read any of these have you read this one? Which one should I get to first? Please talk to me in the comments below. Um, and the last one is Things We Say in the Dark by Kirsty Logan. I love Kirsty Logan's uh, writing. And um, these, these is a, this is a collection of short stories. And they are all dark, creepy, queer, and just sound amazing. And that cover, oh, look at that cover, it's beauty. Um, so I thought this would be a nice, uh, these stories would be a nice like palette cleanser in between things. Um, so yes, I'm very excited about this one. Eek. Um, also, oh no, actually, not the last one. I have this little book of poetry by Emily Bronte. The night is darkening around me. I love Emily Bronte, as I've already mentioned. And this little book is um, very dear to my heart because it was a graduation present from my creative writing teacher. Look, she she put it in there. Happy graduation. So I did a creative writing course um, in 2016, which seems a long way, a long time ago now. Um, and it was by the lovely, lovely Kerry. Um, and she runs these writing courses for women called Write Like a Girl. I will link it in the description box below. 
because they're fantastic. She's running them all online now. Um, so ha check it out because I can't recommend it highly enough. They're just amazing. Um, and they, they, they do them in stages. So there's like um, a course if you've if you like have never written before and you want to get started and then the next level and the next level and they're just amazing and Kerry is lovely and this was her little graduation present to me and I and this is well thumbed so I have um I have read some poems in here before so I'm going to dip into this throughout the month as well because perfect time for Emily Bronte's poems okay guys that is my mammoth TBR for October which I know I'm not going to get through but I would just like to present you with some choices that I am thinking about. So those are the books that I would like to read in October. I know I'm not going to have time for all of them. Tell me which ones you think I should prioritise. Um, speak to me in the comments down below if you've read any of these. And I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.